In this episode, we'll take a look at the Technical Sync Tracky Audio Recorder. This entire episode is recorded with a Tentacle Sync Tracky. I have it in 24-bit mode as opposed to 32-bit mode. We'll get into that a little bit later. And let's go ahead and get you some samples, first of all, that were not processed at all, just straight out of the recorder. Here's just a raw sample, no processing whatsoever. I am wearing the lavalier microphone just here and um, recording in 32-bit float so you can hear what this sounds like. And we have our gain set to 25 dB. So this is what this sounds like. We do, you know, we're in 32-bit float mode, so we do not have the limiter turned on because it's not available in 32-bit float mode because you do not need it in 32-bit float mode. And the only thing we will do here is loudness normalize this to minus 23 LUFS. The reason I normalize to that level is that I don't have to do any sort of processing to get it to that level. I don't have to do any compression or anything like that. So I really want you to be able to hear what this sounds like pretty much directly out of the recorder. Now here's a sample with another microphone, the Sankin Cost 11D, which I'm wearing right there, just so you can hear what this sounds like. The One of the questions I got when we announced that we were going to do this review is someone said, well, can you also test it with some professional level microphones? Here's a Sankin Cost 11D that is wired for Sennheiser wireless. So it's a 3.5 millimeter TRS locking plug. And uh, this is what that sounds like. So. Okay, so since we've both been doing some uh, things to do with audio engineering recently, uh, what are your impressions maybe of doing a mix as a first timer? It can be as complicated or complex as you want it to be. Very much so. In what ways specifically? Sometimes the changes that I make have interesting additive effects, so they might sound fine for one track, but then when I add other tracks, it creates some, some, um, what's the word I want? I, I don't know if it's artifacts, audio artifacts. It creates, yeah. the tracks interact in ways that are unpredictable. Yeah, and then what did you do to combat that? So what's special about this tentacle tracky? Well, a couple of things. First of all, it is kind of like a wireless system, except it's not wireless. It's recording directly to the little body pack right here. It's relatively small. It's actually quite small, which is nice. It does have a belt pack that it comes with. And you connect a lavalier microphone to it. And we are using the lavalier microphone that came with the kit here. And that's what you're hearing right now. So the other thing that makes it very special is that it has what is called 32-bit float wide dynamic range recording capabilities. First of all, let's demonstrate the kind of magic of 32-bit float wide dynamic range recording. Here we have a recording where I set the gain at different levels. Here I set it to 26 or so. Here I set it to its lowest setting of 6 dB. And here, when I did the recording, I set it to its highest setting. And you can see here, we have a problem. It looks like it's clipping and it will sound distorted under normal circumstances, but with 32-bit float recording, we can actually recover that in post. Can't normally do that. Let's show you how you do that with a 32-bit float wide dynamic range recording from the tentacle sync. So I can actually just highlight that and actually reduce its overall amplitude and look at what happens. It all comes back and it sounds something like this. Okay, and now we have it set to 46 dB of gain. Not bad. All right, next up, let's go ahead and take this first portion here. That's normally where I would record it. We could bump that up just a little bit. Maybe put it somewhere in that range. And now we have this next portion where it was recorded much, much lower than we normally would at only 6 dB of gain, the lowest setting on the track E. Let's bump that up. Here is 15 dB of gain. Now that's 30, getting closer. Maybe right there, we added about 33 dB of gain, and this is how it sounds. Okay, we've now reduced the gain to 6 dB. You can see our signal is far quieter, and what I wanna do is be able to boost this up and see what happens. Okay, the noise floor did come up some, but we were able to bring it up and probably put it at a usable level. We could probably do some noise reduction to get rid of that, 
But here you have an idea of what you can do with a 32-bit float recording that you really couldn't do with other recorders that can only record at 24-bit. Now, it's important to understand there are some other factors that go along with 32-bit float recording. The kind of really important factor is that you have to have the hardware to support the wide dynamic range capture. And that usually involves multiple analog to digital converters. If you don't understand anything about what I'm talking about, <laughs> the main idea is that you have to have a recorder that's actually capable of recording that wide dynamic range, capturing that wide dynamic range, and then converting it into a 32-bit float file. So there's one of the big advantages of something like the Tentacle Track E. It is really helpful for those circumstances where you're doing a lot of other things, say, for example, operating camera, doing the lighting, doing the interview, and also recording the audio in addition to everything else. And in those circumstances, it's really easy to make a mistake and forget something. And often, audio is one of the things that's forgotten. So this can help protect you in those circumstances. Now, the more traditional way of doing recording is in 24-bit, and this can do that as well. If you do go into 24-bit mode, it does have what's called a limiter, and the limiter will make it so that when you do get those parts that are very loud, that it should capture those and pull that down a little bit so it doesn't distort. So here's a sample of that. All right, now we're at 46 dB, and uh, we are running definitely very hot, and you can hear the limiter engaging, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, typically, you wouldn't run it this hot, so let's go ahead and bump it down to about 40. And there we are at 40 dB. So here it will just hit the limiter every once in a while when I get just a little bit louder. And the rest of the time it won't really be hitting it. So here it is hitting it now. Checking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now here it is not really hitting it. So that's an example. The track key also has a low cut filter. So you can turn that on if you need to help reduce any sort of background noise like air conditioners or fans or other things. All the recordings are made at a 48 kilohertz sample rate, so that is pretty standard for video, and that's what they've done here as your only option. Another thing that makes this very special is that the company that makes this, Tentacle Sync, actually their very first set of products until now all had to do with timecode syncing audio. So what that means in practical terms is if you record your audio separate from the camera, then when you get into the edit, you have to somehow get that video file joined up with the audio file. And what they do is they build what are called timecode generators. This also has a timecode generator built into it. So the way that works is you can synchronize a very high accuracy clock inside of the track key, and then you also attach another one, a, what they call a sync key, to your camera. That feeds that very accurate timecode into your camera as well, then in post, it's very easy to sync them up. Here's a demo of that. In this case, all you have to do literally is drop the video file into the sync app, along with the audio files, push a button, and they're all synced up. You can then export a file that most video editing apps can read, like, for example, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, and then you open that file in your video editing app, and everything's synced up and ready to edit. So it makes things very, very easy that way. And that's how this is kind of like wireless, but in some respects, it's better than wireless because you don't have all the issues that come along with wireless. A lot of people think that wireless should be easy. We have, we have mobile phones. Why should wireless microphones be so difficult to implement? And the reality is, is as soon as you get more than two wireless microphones at the same time, things get really, really complex. And so this kind of bypasses all that. You don't have any dropouts. You don't have those kind of issues. And so that makes things a lot easier. Now, it's a trade-off as well. With wireless mics, you can actually, whoever is behind the camera or whoever's operating sound, can monitor and listen and make sure that you're getting good audio before the take is done. And so that's really kind of the trade-off here is that you don't get that opportunity. With a 32-bit float recording capability, that becomes less of an issue. What you don't get to monitor for now that would still be important would be things like maybe there's a loose connection on the microphone or the clothing is rustling against the microphone on the person wearing the mic, things like that. Can't really monitor, so that's kind of the inherent downside of using something like this. But I really think that the trade-off is definitely worth it in a lot of circumstances. The Tracky also includes the license for the Tentacle Sync Studio app, which runs on Mac, or the Tentacle Sync app that runs on Windows, which isn't quite as full-featured, but will still convert any sort of time code that's fed into your camera into a format that most video editors can recognize. So 
That's going to work with DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer, and with Final Cut Pro. Included in the kit is this lavalier microphone I'm using right now. It's a decent lavalier, nothing special. It's not a, wouldn't call it a pro level lavalier, but it seems really well built and it sounds okay. Now, in terms of overall performance of the mic, the one downside I saw, it, it, I think it actually sounds okay, but the one downside I did see is that it's noise characteristic is it, it, it produces a little bit more noise than other microphones. So for example, I compared it to the Sankin Cost 11 d Now, is that a fair comparison? No, because <laughs> the Sankin microphone itself costs more than the Tracky with a lavalier microphone. So not really a fair comparison, but just kind of to use it as a baseline. Now you can use the Sankin with the Tracky, which is what I did for the test. So if you do have other lavalier microphones that are wired for Sennheiser Wireless, a 3.5 millimeter TRS locking, then they'll work with this as well. It also includes a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-A cable, color bands that help you kind of keep them separated. So if you have multiple trackies, you can tell them apart very easily. Storage pouches, a clip to clip the microphone on, a metal windshield, a fur cover, and a belt clip for the trackie itself. It does come with an inbuilt battery, and that battery lasts a significant amount of time. I actually measured nine hours and 55 minutes, pure recording time. That is literally recording that entire time and connecting periodically with Bluetooth from your phone, which is how you control the trackie. Now I need to address the question of an inbuilt battery. The nice thing about an inbuilt battery is they can make the unit very small, which is very convenient. The downside of an inbuilt battery is what do you do when the battery stops working? Now, first of all, they're using a lithium polymer battery. It is rated for enough cycles. They told me two years with very heavy use every day, you can still expect 80% capacity at the end of two years. Not bad. But they also told me that they do have a battery replacement program. And more specifically, they actually have a kit you can buy for replacing the battery. That will be coming out in 2021 where it comes with the tools and the battery itself, along with instructions on how to open it up, replace the battery, and then recycle the older battery. So the nice thing is, is this does not just become e-junk once that battery fails. And they do put a high quality battery in. I've had the Tentacle Sync E, just the time code generators for, I think I got my first set in 2016 or 2017. And those batteries are still going strong now. I don't use, they're not, I wouldn't say heavy use. <laughs> um, but they get fairly regular use and no degradation in the battery quality there. So, and if worse comes to worse and the battery stops working, there is going to be a way to replace that. On the unit, there is a USB-C port. Through that USB-C port, you can charge the internal battery or you can transfer files to your computer. Now you can start and stop recording from the unit itself. There's a little switch on the side and you just push up for a second and that starts the recording. And then you push up again to stop the recording. Of course, you can control everything from the app. And this app allows you to do a whole ton of things. Not only does it allow you to wirelessly rejam the timecode clocks in the trackie with any other trackies you're using, but also with any tentacle sync keys that you're using. Those are the timecode generators that you connect to your camera. And if you're not really familiar with a timecode workflow, we put a video up here where we kind of demonstrate how that works. On the unit itself, there is a five segment LED meter. So you have a general idea of what the levels look like. And if you wanna turn those LEDs off while the talent or the people that are using the microphone are recording, you can do that from the app. So it's not distracting or kind of flashing through their clothing or whatever the case may be. Now this switch on the side of the unit, you can also lock that from the app so that somebody doesn't accidentally bump it and stop the recording or turn it off. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the unit itself which allows you to monitor. Now on the US version, you can only monitor while you're getting things set up. Once you start recording, the monitoring turns off. And another thing that's important to understand is that you cannot monitor from the phone app. There's no way to transfer currently the audio that you're recording over to the phone so you can monitor it. So I don't know if that is a feature they'll be able to add in the future, but currently, at least on the US version, that is not supported. Now that headphone output, I think really works best with kind of consumer oriented headphones or headphones up to about 100 ohms. If you start using audiophile headphones with 300 ohm impedance ratings, it's not gonna, you may not be able to get enough volume out of them, but anything that's about 100 ohms and under seems to work great. The 3.5 millimeter input where you plug in the microphone can also double 
as a way to jam this unit to another timecode generator. So if you want to do it via cable, you can do that as well. And then finally, the unit does come with a two-year warranty. So pretty good there. Now, there are a few downsides or some things that I think that people that are looking at this need to understand. Number one, as I mentioned before, there's no live monitoring while you're recording. So you can monitor up until the point where you start recording on the US version. Um, but once you start recording, the headphone jack turns off. And also you cannot monitor from the app on your phone. Again, unfortunate, just some things to know. That's not gonna be a problem for everybody, but you do need to understand that before you get into this. The build is mostly plastic. And I put that as a con, not because I'm terribly concerned about it, because I have had the tentacle sinkies and actually the original tentacle sinks for a number of years. I've dropped them multiple times. They seem to be made out of the same plastic and I've never experienced a problem with that. So I'm not terribly concerned about it, but if you are looking for more of a professional tool, there are some other products out on the market that may be a better fit. So for example, Electrosonics makes a stereo body pack recorder similar to this that you might wanna look at instead. But I would say for you know people shooting YouTube videos or anything where it's all self-funded, that's where something like this makes more sense. And then finally, the included microphone. It's not the best microphone in the world. It's not bad. Sounds okay. And the only problem I had with it really was that it generates a little bit more self-noise than I would like. So, or maybe that's just less dynamic range. I'm not sure. It was very much a practical noise floor test that we did. So it was actually recording the sound that was in the room. But the noise floor sat substantially higher than the Senkin Cos 11D. Again, not a fair comparison necessarily based on the price of the Cos 11D, which is more than the price of a Track E. But just so you're aware, it's not the cleanest microphone in the world. But on the bright side, you can use basically any microphone that's wired with a 3.5 millimeter locking TRS plug. That's going to be most things that are made for things like the Rode Link system or the Rode Wireless Go, or even the kind of more consumer-oriented Sennheiser systems, like the XSWD, I believe it's called. So you definitely have some options here in terms of using other microphones. Now, who is this product for? Again, I think it's going to be more for the people who want the freedom of not being attached to a camera or an audio recorder, but don't necessarily want to take on some of the risks and the challenges that come along with wireless. And if you just think that wireless is neat and you, <laughs> and then you suddenly find yourself in a situation where you need to record four different people with wireless mics, you're in for a pretty substantial challenge, possibly, depending on the situation. A lot of the consumer wireless systems once you start getting up to four channels, they start to fall apart. And by consumer, I mean the 2.4 gigahertz. Those start to fall apart depending on the location that you're at and how much Wi-Fi activity there is and other 2.4 gigahertz activity there is. And then even on the UHF side, if you're using a UHF wireless microphone system, these are going to be ones that tune in the United States at least between 470 and 608 uh, megahertz. Even those, as soon as you get more than two channels, coordinating all those channels becomes more of a challenge. Not impossible, of course, but takes more time and you need to understand how that works. So that's something where the track E, where you just don't want to kind of mess around with all that or you need to move a little bit more quickly, this can be a really nice solution. So hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Thank you.